Well, hello, fourth and fifth graders. Welcome to another digital art lesson. If I have not met you yet, you might be a new student to Clarendon. My name is Ben Dumas, and I am one of the art teachers at our school. Uh, today, we will be doing a project, a still life project. Um, you will need a pencil and a piece of paper. If you have a sketchbook, grab a sketchbook. Uh, let's get started. So the reason that still lifes are so important when it comes to drawing is because it helps you practice creating shapes and forms, right? It also helps you build three-dimensional forms through different techniques like shading. And it can be a little difficult to put a three-dimensional object like a bottle onto a two-dimensional surface like a piece of paper, okay? So how do you make it look like a sphere? if you're trying to draw an apple, right? You have to use different techniques in order to do that. You have to focus on dimension and perspective and shading and all these things that are going on when you're just trying to draw still objects, okay? Another thing that you have to focus on is the lighting. Where is the light coming from? Where are my shadows? All those things are going to make your still life look more realistic, your drawing, all right? So let's talk about how we're gonna make it a representational still life today. So what I would like you all to do is to walk around your house and to pick up things that remind you of who you are. So for example, if you like photography, like myself, I chose to draw this pretty cool camera. It's my dad's. I've taken pictures with it before, it still works. It's pretty cool. Uh, I know it kind of looks like a toy. Um, but anyway, I chose to draw this. I also was walking around and found a sand dollar. I thought this was very representational. It shows that I like the ocean or the beach. I also chose to draw, along with photography, a film canister. So this is film. This is what you used to take pictures with before your phones, okay? So some other things that I thought might be pretty representational would be this climbing shoe. So I like rock climbing. Uh, you could draw your ballet slipper if you're into ballet dancing. That would represent, it would be pretty clear what you were into if you drew a rock climbing shoe. All right. I also found this. thought this might be kind of fun to draw if you're into origami. You could draw a paper crane. Or to talk about your culture, you could draw a paper crane. And a baseball. So all of these objects make sure they represent who you are. So if you're gonna draw a baseball, make sure that you like baseball, right? So make sure it represents who you are, okay? So for example, if I was trying to represent Sherlock Holmes in a still life, I would draw his pipe, his magnifying glass, and that funny hat that he always wore. And even if I were to just put those three objects down on the paper, you would probably get the idea that I was talking about Sherlock Holmes. Okay, so here we have my three objects that I chose for my representational still life. To make it a little more challenging, you could put a pillowcase underneath or some sort of fabric. And then you will have to pay attention to the different texture of the fabric and try to draw that. And it will be a little bit more challenging than putting it on a flat surface. All right, so here are my three objects that I chose for my representational still life. I have my film canister, my sand dollar, and my camera. So remember, drawing the still objects is going to allow you to really focus on the dimension of all these different shapes. You're going to have to make it look like it is not a flat object. So you'll use different techniques like shading. Make sure when you're drawing your lines that they're going in the right direction and they're not flat. We've talked about using curve lines to convey dimension, right? To show dimension in your artwork. I've done the example of the jack-o'-lantern behind Here's our jack-o'-lantern. If you do straight lines with your jack-o'-lantern, he's gonna look like he's in jail. But if you do curve lines with your jack-o'-lantern, 
he is going to look like he is more three-dimensional or he is coming off of the paper. So when you're drawing your baseball, if you're in the baseball, all right, keep in mind the lines you would use to shade it would be curved lines. So another thing you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind when you're doing your still life is the different tones that you use in your drawing. So to make it look as rich and realistic as possible, you're going to wanna to use a lot of different tones. So the tones are the grayscale goes from the whitest white and then all the different grays to the blackest black, okay? And if you're using all of those different tones in your drawing, I am not in this one. See, this is probably the darkest part of my drawing, but if I were to put different tones in and keep working on this, then it would continue to look more realistic, okay? It's the same with a photograph. If a photograph is very flat and doesn't have a lot of blacks and whites and it's mostly gray, it's going to look very flat. But if you have lots of different varieties of tones, it'll make it look more realistic, okay? So that's one thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind when you're doing your still life today. The other thing that you wanna keep in mind is the objects that you chose. Now, I know I used a apple, which is a organic piece of fruit, right? Something organic you might see in a still life and also something like a bottle. These are some common objects that you might see in a still life. Now, I wouldn't want you drawing an apple today unless your family owned an apple orchard, okay? So what I'm trying to say is I want the objects that you choose to really represent who you are. Okay, fourth and fifth graders, well, it's time for me to sign off today. Feel free to send me any of your artwork. I'd be happy to see some of the objects that you all chose to represent yourselves. I hope you had fun with the project and I will see you all next week.